I always said when it comes to industrial policy, if we're going to have it, why don't we have Dave Cody in charge of it? What do you, <laughs> what do you think about uh, the Chips and Science Act? What do you think about some of the big industrial policy that's coming out of Washington right now? It's a lot of money involved. Yeah. Uh, well, when you think about industrial policy, it tends to be uh, kind of a uh, secular, uh, a mobilizing event, the left or right, and people are either absolutely for it or absolutely against it. When the reality is, uh, there's always been some kind of industrial policy in the country. You're going back to establishing the railroads, establishing canals, the interstate system, NASA to put somebody on the moon. I mean, there's always been that kind of, the, the trick is to not let it go too far. Yeah. So how, how do you find that you know, kind of right spot? So I'm not completely against it, but you, you gotta be smart about it because it's very easy once politics starts to intrude, politics will triumph good judgment all the time. So you, you wanna make sure you don't lose the good judgment side of it. You asked about the, the CHIPS Act, and I would say, you know, I'm a bit ambivalent about the whole thing. Uh, in terms of what they think it's going to accomplish, uh, I don't think they're even close. And if you take a look at the percent of chips that'll actually affect, it's, I don't know, estimates from three to 5% of the total. It's not the super high-end difficult chips. And the know-how required to make those chips doesn't exist in the U.S. anymore. Most of it exists in Taiwan. And this, uh, with the exception of maybe the R&D spending that they're doing, it uh, doesn't really address any of that. So we're spending a lot of money that doesn't exactly solve the problem, which is how do you create uh, a more domestic capability when it comes to being able to produce these super high-end chips? We should be able to figure that out because a lot of the equipment to make these chips is made in the U.S. So you would think that if we spent money in the right places to say, how do we really learn how to do this? That would be, I think, much more efficient and effective spending than just building plants to produce chips that really aren't all that essential. So in general, Dave, uh, a lot of people say, we should look to industrial policy for the things that only the government can do. If the private can, sector can do it, let them do it. In the area of chips, are there things that only the government can do that we actually have to turn to the government and ask them to do it for us? Well, I think the better place for them to be spending their money is more on the R&D yeah. side or uh, providing incentives for people to learn how to produce those chips here. And uh, I, I don't really see that. Uh, one of the things I would like to talk about though on industrial policy is um, we spend a lot of time talking about uh, bringing manufacturing jobs back to the US, like manufacturing jobs uh, solve all our economic problems. And that's a little backwards, I think. And we're, into, we, we're in the agricultural age, went to the industrial era, and now we're in the digital age. And if we were smart, we'd be doing the same thing that all our counterparts did 100, 150 years ago when they said, uh, there's this shift to an industrial economy. We need kids to be able to be literate and numerate if they're going to be successful in this kind of environment. Uh, now we're going to the digital age. And instead of saying, all right, how do we educate our kids? How do we prepare them to be able to be successful in a world like this? Instead, we're saying, no, let's make sure that uh, we can keep all the manufacturing jobs here because these will pay well. It'd be a little like if 130 years ago, uh, politicians and business people had said, God, uh, you know, with this industrial thing, man, that's gonna be a lot of trouble. We need to find a way to keep people on the farm, <laughs> right? I mean, it's, it's totally backwards. So I'd rather see an industrial policy that focused more on education for all our kids to say, how do we prepare them for this digital age which is gonna go on for another 80 years or so until something new comes around. This is gonna be with us for a while. You mentioned R&D. Yeah. Uh, why can't the private sector do that? I mean, uh, you had a big R&D budget, right? Yeah. I mean, all the big corporations have big R&D budget. Why can't the private sector give us the R&D that we need? Yeah, I think that's one of the misconceptions about uh, R&D is always talked about like it's a single thing. But it's two words, right? It's research, development. Well. Development takes stuff that was developed in research and turns it into viable products. If you were to take a look at all company spending on R&D together, I wouldn't be surprised if you found 90 to 95 percent of it was spent on development. Mm -hmm. Because research is just too iffy, too expensive. The chances of it turning into something generally can be pretty small. And that's one where I do think the government has a big role to play in just doing this basic research that's available to all U.S. companies. So that as they start finding these things, companies can then take them and develop into products and services that'll be useful. 
It's one of the areas I think we're falling down a bit, and for me, this would be good industrial policy, mm -hmm. is a lot more money going into research, whether it's uh, health, uh, anything uh, digital, bioengineering, all those things that are going to be very important to us in this century. What about climate? Another big aspect of industrial policy right now is the move toward uh, green energy, essentially. Yep. A lot of money is going into that right now. Uh, does that make sense to you? Well, uh, I'm a fan of figuring out how do you keep land, air, and water as neutral as possible. We're putting a lot of CO2 into the atmosphere, so figuring out how can we uh, do this in a more neutral way I think is a good idea. However, we shouldn't be thinking that this is going to solve climate change. If you really believe that CO2 and believe all the models that CO2 lasts for 100 years in the atmosphere, is going to be there. We don't get to net zero as a globe for till 2050 or something. And remember, the U.S. is only like 14 or 15 percent of all emissions. That means global warming is coming whether we get to zero or not. It's it's coming. Let's assume, Dave, that we decide we need industrial policy, whether mm -hmm. it's in chips or whether it's in forms of climate, and we decide we need to spend this much money on it. How should we go about doing it? I mean, I think back in World War II, I think FDR basically turned to U.S. industry yeah. to help really drive a lot of the industrialization yeah. that helped uh, the United States and the Allies win the war. How would we go about really figuring out who should administer the industrial <laughs> policy? Well, um, if you go back to that time, what they actually did was take a number of business leaders yeah and put, brought them into government in order to run a lot of these things, which I don't think, is, I still don't think is a bad idea. And I found myself thinking even when we were in the midst of COVID and we couldn't find uh, basic products that just weren't enough of them, mm. I often thought, why don't they assemble a group of retired CEOs to, and assign them tasks to say, go figure this out, yeah. as opposed to just having a yeah. bunch of government -y types uh, do it. Mm. And yeah, I'd say that possibility still exists. Well, we have a retired CEO right here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you volunteering, Dave? <laughs> I don't know that I'm that retired uh, or retired, retired enough to be able to do that at this point.